Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share my full review of the digitally digested segment for the NVIDIA GTX 980. This graphics card launched several months back, priced originally at $599 for the reference version that we're looking at here today. You could pick that up built by either EVGA or PNY. You're going to get the exact same card. Of course, you can go with non-reference versions, but I'm not getting into that. In terms of pricing and performance, though, you're looking at basically the best card money can buy, in my opinion opinion, especially when it comes to uh, not just performance, but also power consumption and noise. Uh, so let's talk, and also heat for that matter as well. So not only does the 980 look good, it looks good on paper and it performs just as well to match. That Maxwell architecture, single GPU that we have in here is clocked at over 1100 megahertz and really comes quite close to the Titan Z that I've been benchmarking and testing this against in real world use both for gaming as well as, more importantly for me, rendering for all of you. Uh, and what I've seen are really impressive results from this 980. Now again, this is a single card solution, 4 gigs of VRAM, uh, low power consumption, especially for the type of performance that it puts out, which is basically going to give you the ability to run just about any current game at Ultra and get good to great results depending on how well that game is optimized. I say that because as every gamer knows, every game has its uh, strengths and weaknesses when it comes to how well it utilizes uh, the hardware that you have. Uh, so the 980 in terms of gaming is simply fantastic. When it comes to port selections, also no slouch. You can see right there uh, we have DVI port, and then uh, moving away from the DVI, we've got three Display Ports and one HDMI 2.0 port, and that's critical for those of you interested in 4K gaming. This card can pull off 4K gaming, although it's far from what uh, I would expect or hope for 4K gaming's future, and that's because this is really just the beginning. The Titan Z that I've been working with is where 4K gaming was supposed to start legitimately, and it is able to handle 4K gaming, and you know what? The 980 can do it too. But for how long and how well is a very different story. So it's nice to see HDMI 2.0 here. It's nice to have uh, that incredibly fast clock speed out of the box. And of course, this card can be overclocked uh, like anything before it. Uh, the 4 gigs of uh, VRAM is more than enough for any game on the market today, but you know, this card is going to see a refresh very soon. When I say refresh, it won't be replaced, but something complimentary will come out, uh, whether it's a 990, a 980 Ti, it'll be a little bit faster, it'll have more VRAM, and it will be more expensive. And the 550, 500 that you could pick this up for now, it'll go down in price and make this an even better value at that point. Uh, when it comes to the fan noise and overall temperature on this card, it's a stunner. I mean, this thing is incredibly quiet for what it can do, and I've tested every current title basically that's out now. Um, you name it, because as many of you know, beyond just having games that I purchase, a lot of bundled games also, um, from when you do actually step into a brand new graphics card, you get a couple of titles to choose from. Uh, and I have had extensive, uh, extensive excuse me, access uh, to a buddy of mine's Steam library as well to really put both the Titan Z and this card through the paces when it comes to gaming. And the 980 has chops. I mean, really, in an SLI configuration, it beats everything for its price pretty much. Um, again, if you're interested in power consumption and noise, which I am, I don't want to have a jet engine in my home or office. Uh, so it's something where... Uh, right now, you really can't find a better solution. So uh, the Titan Z would put out maybe 10, 12 frames per second more than this card. And this card is $500, $550. The Z is $1,500. Uh, granted, when games require more RAM than this has, uh, that will be an issue. The Z will be able to more competently take on. But keep in mind that even with that difference, the Maxwell architecture just has too many advantages, and that's why the refresh or complementary cards that NVIDIA is going to launch with, again, probably higher clock speed as well as expanded RAM are just going to be incredible offerings. No matter what the price point is going to be, they're going to be 
basically topping this, which right now is, in my opinion, the best card that you could possibly buy for just about anyone at the enthusiast level that wants a great gaming card. Now, when it comes to rendering, which is what I had set out to really accomplish with the Titan Z, not just play games, uh, and re with regard to the gaming, again, whether it was Far Cry 4, Shadow of Mordor, um, anything I was testing, uh, Metro, I mean, every current title uh, that you would see, I don't even want to reference things like Battlefield 4, even though people still want to use that as uh, a reference uh, title, you know, for benchmarking. Uh, this card was able to chew it up in the same way the Titan Z was and go way beyond what my eyes could possibly see in frame rates. Um, even on simple classics like Counter-Strike, you know, Go, CSGO, uh, this was putting out a little under 300 frames, so was the Titan Z, even with the multi-GPU. Not that CSGO actually makes use of it, but you see where I'm going. Now with video rendering, uh, and that was just a classic throwback title. With everything else current, you're going to see, you know, somewhere between, I would say, 50 to 60 frames per second on this card running at Ultra. And that was at my 2560 by 1600. If you take it down to 1080p, this card is going to give you even better benchmarking. Uh, you know, higher frames, obviously. Uh, less stress on the card than having to deal with that 1600p resolution, or if you take it up to 4K. When it comes to rendering, though, that was where I was surprised because, yes, it does have 2,000 plus CUDA cores, but nowhere near the 5,000 plus that the Z has. And it really comes quite close. Uh, whether I was using uh, Sony Vegas or Adobe, uh, Adobe definitely far more efficient when it came to rendering, which is not surprising. Um, but I did have to do some custom workarounds to get support for the 980 because Maxwell's not supported. The Titan Z also was not supported. Uh, the 980 on an 11.5 gig test file that I was using to basically just re-render, change the container, uh, was running around 42 to 45 minutes. The Titan Z could pull that off in 28 minutes. So there's definitely an advantage, a perceivable one, no question about it. But when you look at the pricing, even if you're here to video render strictly, I don't know that that time difference is worth the cost difference uh, between the 980 and something like the Titan Z. And you generally aren't going to benefit from an SLI when configuration. Let's say I threw another 980 into my current build, which is already a monster. Uh, it really wouldn't benefit me in any way except for on the gaming front, you know, pretty much twice the performance when it comes to gaming. So all these great things I'm saying about frame rates would just double up. And that is something that will be tempting, but I myself will also be waiting to see uh, what NVIDIA ends up launching because uh, I am running a multi-display setup, and that was another concern, and that was a reason that I liked the Z so much with that 12 gigs, even though it is split 6 per GPU, uh, and this is four, so there's really only a two gig real world gain for most applications out there that support, um, that don't support rather SLI. Uh, and even if they do, they generally don't make use of all the RAM necessarily properly. Uh, but you do need more RAM, VRAM specifically, when it comes to driving multiple displays. And I do have an Ultra Sharp 30 at 2560 uh, by 1600 in the center, flanked by two 24 inch 1200p monitors. So uh, basically, my 670, which only had 2 gigs of RAM, was able to handle it. So I knew that both of these cards, either this or the Z, was going to be able to handle it. It was more of a matter of which did a better job and was more competent and cost-effective for what I needed, rendering and then gaming as well, uh, obviously at Ultra in this uh, tier of cards. Uh, and it ended up being, in my opinion, very easy. The 980 was the, the winner simply because I'm not even getting into the problems I had with the Titan Z. Uh, but the 980 just clear in a way has performance, every element of performance in its favor. Not just the frame rate. Uh, rendering, yes, again, it was slower, but that's expected. It doesn't have all the the beef that the Z has, even though the Z has slower uh, GPUs. It does have uh, all of those CUDA cores, and that's what you're leveraging when it comes to rendering. Uh, but 45 minutes for an 11.5 gig f uh, 4K video file? That's still pretty good. Um, you know, how it stacks up against my old 670, I'm not getting into that. But in the real world, this thing can render. Of course, it's no workstation card, neither uh, is the Titan Z. But uh, this is close enough to the Z that it easily takes 
my $500 or $550, whatever you end up picking it up for. So if you need a card today, the 980 is definitely, in my opinion, the one to go with if you're looking for single. And if you want an SLI config, grab two of these. Um, people wonder why I've got the reference design cards. Uh, that's because the manufacturer, the builder, I should say, the boutique that I've been working with, Main Gear, uh, goes with reference only. Of course, unless you want them to uh, liquid cool stuff and overclock, then they can basically do whatever you know you want, or rather they are willing to do to the card in order to uh, achieve the performance you're after. Um, but also, quite frankly, as other users have pointed out, the reference design is beautiful, in my opinion. If you could say that of a graphics card, it does get my nod. Um, definitely nicer than anything else on the market. And again, the power efficiency of Maxwell, along with that speed, is just something that uh, it isn't necessarily a major leap over the last-gen architecture, but this is where things we've always wanted them to go, and this is the beginning. So it's the beginning of 4K gaming. It's the beginning of great frame rates at lower power consumption. Also, they've made some great advancements in memory sharing as well. So there are a lot of things to like about Maxwell. Don't forget the HDMI 2.0 port here that you're not going to find on anything pre-Maxwell is critical for 4K gaming if that's what you're after. Uh, if you want 4K uh, at 60, you need to have HDMI 2.0. Can't be achieved otherwise through at least an HDMI port. Display port, I'm pretty sure, yes, you can still do that. Uh, but that pretty much rounds things out. Um, I didn't have any problems with the multiple displays. Uh, I didn't have any problems with gaming. Yes, there was a little bit more performance to be had with the Titan Z, but at the end of the day, uh, the 980 is a beast uh, nonetheless. I mean, there, there's a reason this is one of the best cards, if not the best single GPU on the market right now, and that's because uh, it is. It's not a matter of hype or anything like that. Uh, when it comes to price to performance, the 980 is a fantastic solution. And that's why, even though I've continued to mention that newer cards will come out, and if you can wait, wait, which is advice someone could always give you. Someone who knows nothing about tech could give you that advice. Um, I'll still recommend it because I know great things are on the horizon, but if you need something today, this is the great thing. And if you need it, you know, two-time, you know that the SLI is going to give you twice, basically, the performance, which is outstanding, but for my needs, specifically, again, rendering and then gaming on as another outlet, uh, a single GPU like this is more than enough, uh, at least for my needs. And that's what I found out uh, through the course of uh, extensive testing, both in gaming and rendering. Uh, and I can basically list all of the different games I ended up benchmarking and testing. If all of you are interested, I know I didn't run through all of them today, but trust me, a lot of different games. And that was running off of a RAID 0 uh, SSD config uh, with the two AMD R7 uh, 480s that I, uh, the 480 gig drives that I got, which are some, some of the fastest drives right now on the market. So you can imagine in RAID 0, uh, even better. Any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.